This month's team brief comes from the new ophthalmology unit at Boston House on Frog Lane. The service moved here in November last year and I'm going to be meeting the departmental manager, Ewan Lambert. As usual, I'll be asking her three quiz questions. Firstly, how many patients does the ophthalmology service treat per year? Secondly, which member of staff owns two green goddesses and why? And thirdly, which member of staff is a trained professional part-time singer? This month's corporate objective is about putting patients first and it's about our plans to reduce the number of people being admitted or attending A&E. We've identified 4,700 patients in the Wigan area who are most at risk of admission and these people have been the subject of care planning. As a result, in this group there's been a 40% reduction in admissions and attendances, which is very impressive. There's another group of elderly patients in nursing homes that have also had reviews from our geriatric team and again this has resulted in a 50 plus percent reduction in admissions. All of this sounds great except that there is still a rising tide of attendances and admissions. So although we're being successful in these client groups, the numbers overall continue to rise. Moving on to the important data about safety, and it's been a good month for infection control because we've had no cases of MRSA and none of C. diff either. We have had two cases of MSSA and three of E. coli. I've got no new mortality data because Dr. Foster is about to do its annual rebasing, so the figure of 87.45 is what still stands for last year. Now if you look here at the chart on C. diff, you can see in the bottom left hand corner the blue line represents our performance this year compared to the, the black line of last year and the red line of the year before. And you can see that our performance is much better this year, so that's a great start to the year. So for the total serious harms in June, there's the five infections that I've already described, no never events, no pressure ulcers, one serious fall, no ventilator required pneumonia and no central line infections. So that's a total of six for the month, the same as the previous month. Moving on to our measures of effectiveness, and you can see here the chart which compares our A&E performance to other trusts. And you can see from it, because we are red rated, that we've been having a very tough time, as everybody who works in our system knows. However, most other trusts are in the same boat, and I do want to take this opportunity of saying thank you to everybody that works in our unscheduled care system, because I know how pressured it has been. Now, we've had a reasonable start to the year for finances, and after three months, we're £500,000 behind plan, and it's the usual pattern of higher than expected income and higher than expected expenditure. Our CIP is ahead of plan. We've spent just over £2 million on capital, and we've got a satisfactory continuity of service rating of three. The big developments on site and service are all at Wrightington this month, and if you work there, you'll have seen the structural steel work going up, the skeleton of the building will be up and finished by September of this year. We've also started work on the new assisted conception unit which should be open by February of next year and as part of the preparation for that we're demolishing the old annex next to the conference centre and that will have gone by Christmas. The Healthier Together public consultation is now fully underway and it's already proving very controversial with strong media reaction in favour and against it. Now, there have been a number of staff events at Wrightington and Wigan already, and there's one at Lee on the 15th of August, to which all staff are welcome to attend. If you want to understand the Trust's position, the best thing is to look at the video that we've put onto our intranet site, because that explains what the consultation is all about and what we want you to do. But the main thing is that the questionnaire asks us to vote between eight options. So what we would like all staff to do is to vote for option 5.1 and option 5.2. And what I'd like to ask you to do is to fill that in personally, but also get as many of your friends and family to do the same, please. Moving on to the caring section of Team Brief, and I want to talk to those who are involved in patients who are dying, because the Liverpool Care Pathway has now been phased out, and we're replacing it with something called the Individual Plan of Care and common approach and documentation has been agreed across all agencies in Wigan. Now of course there will be training for relevant staff and there is support available from the palliative care team and you can see here where you can get further information about this new process.
Now it's time for congratulations. In the Healthcare People Management Association Awards, we entered in the category of staff engagement and our entry won the prize. Not only that, there were 15 other categories and we won the best of all 15 categories. So well done to everybody working in staff engagement. Also, in seven day working, uh, we won an award for best communications. So this was the one of the new 12 national pilots that has been best at communicating, so well done to everywhere there too. Now the Team of the Month award goes to the emergency care nursing staff, whom I've already complimented once. We all know just how much pressure they've been under these last few months, and they continue to give safe and effective care cheerfully under the most extensive of pressures and thousands of people coming through our doors. So well done to everybody in the emergency care nursing team. Thank you. Here I am with Ewan Lambert, who manages the 70 or so staff in the ophthalmology department at Boston House and who has worked for the Trust for 32 years. So Ewan, tell me, what are the main functions of the ophthalmology department? The, mon the main function is that we provide outpatient service, but we also provide procedure, diagnostic and treatment centre for macular degeneration. And we also carry out minor procedures in Boston House. We do general um, and, speci and specialist outpatient service, including uh, orthoptist, uh, diagnostic for, from the technician, field test, and pre-op assessment carried out by the nurses here. And what are the main problems and pressures that you face? Uh, since we moved from the main hospital, I think the main thing that I notice is the lack of uh, portering service, the security and the domestic staff also, the moving up and down the Wigan Lane with the case notes as well. And what are you most proud of here? I'm very proud of my staff and the multidisciplinary team functioning. Um, also, I'm very proud of the macular surface. Uh, last year, we had to use a private firm to come in every Saturday, Sunday to provide our, our injection clinic. And now we are doing all in house. That's fantastic. And now we're going to go on to the three quiz questions. First of all, how many patients does the ophthalmology service see every year? From 2013 to 2014, we had 30,000 patients attending the outpatient service. Secondly, which member of staff owns two green goddesses and why? <laughs> it's one of our consultant ophthalmologists, Mr. Heaven. I think he's a little bit eccentric. And finally, which member of your staff is a part-time professional singer? Her name is Sarah Reninkle. She is a technician and screen a grader in our service. Mm -hmm.